all our guests to please be set for this next session where we are about to present to you someone who continues to inspire day in and day out. He's a fantastic uh, role model for many. And as we talk about artificial intelligence and human tech, more tech than human, how is it that collaborating amongst enterprises, startups, and government is so very important today and uh, taking in really a driving factor and uh, when we talk about AI and innovation, this is really something that is taking a lead. So may I request all of you to please put your hands together as we look forward to presenting a very special address right here. A round of applause as I welcome Mr. C.P. Gurnani, former Managing Director and CEO of Tech Mahindra and co-founder and Executive Vice Chairman of AI on OS. A round of applause as he joins us on stage to inspire us further and share with us how is it that he came up with the brilliant idea of AI on OS. Sir, always such a pleasure to see you. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. You know, clearly, I'm in a bit of a spot, and I don't admit that so easily. The reason I'm in a spot is, this morning, I opened the newspaper. There's a friend of mine who used to be a colleague of mine at Mahindra's, Jaspreet Bindra, talking about the Microsoft buying a nuclear power plant. And uh, here you had Divya uh, talking about less about data center, more about energy. So I did realize that maybe India and power crisis are meant to live with each other, AI or no AI. Then uh, I thought, all right, I mean, uh, if somebody else is talking about infrastructure, uh, and I must congratulate Divya for building that metaphor that driver makes the difference, cars will remain the same, but if you have the right infrastructure, I mean, you could actually be the better pilot than others. Uh, and I genuinely believe it was a great metaphor because you could apply it to almost all the journey, whether it's a technological journey, whether it is a people journey, whether it is the strategy, whether it's the product efficiency, I was talking to Another friend of mine, just before I walked in, a young entrepreneur again, Shamik Gupta, uh, he has a company called Three Cube. Now, as it is, Cube has come, you know, not left my life. I mean, uh, uh, you know, during my teenage days, I started uh, struggling with the Rubik's Cube. And then after that, Shamik doesn't leave me with his Three Cubes. But uh, anyway, Shamik. Uh, you talked about AI to help in functional efficiency. You talked about AI for strategy. You talked about AI to integrate better. And I couldn't agree more with you. Then just a little while later, we had Deepak talk about the platform. I mean, clearly, uh, enterprise AI is the most abused word right now, and uh, when I talk to the conversational AI guys, they think they are enterprise AI. When I talk to the Gen, I, Gen AI guys, they think they are enterprise AI. And when I talk to any one of you, I mean, you would have your own interpretation. One guy teaches me LLM, the other guy teaches me SLM. Then the, I thought just about uh, all the LMs were done, somebody came up with DLM domain language model. I'm sure there are more, and as you know, we get together for lunch at some stage, I mean, there will be more models to discuss. The, then the previous panel, there was this two things that I thought was unanswered properly. Is the next wave going to be exponential? And if it is exponential, can we imagine what that wave would look like. 
the second part was that it did not have enough time for interactions. So I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of the panelists there, but I know it was a very engaging session. Now, when I look at, you know, as a part of the industry, you know, as a part of, you know, a practitioner, I clearly talk to a lot of futurists. And one of the futurists which has impressed me always was Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil would be about 76 years. First time I met him about 40 years ago, or 30 years. Now. He said his DNA and his history shows that he is not going to live much long because his father died at the age less than 40, his grandfather died at the le age less than whatever, again less than 40, and today he's 76. Touch wood. I'm happy that he's going strong. But he really worked hard on that, uh, that part. He really made it his mission. He was the first one who started using AI for healthcare. I mean, all of us know AI is not new. The first time the concept was born was 1956. It is not that we have not seen, I mean, it's maybe seven, eight years ago, we saw Sophia in one of the conference rooms out here. I mean, it looked as real as, and that time, that robotics was considered as AI. And I was joking with my business partner, Rahul Bhatia, Rahul Bhatia in 15 days launched two companies. Rahul Bhatia is the, you know, his family is the founder of Indigo. And they own about 60% market share of the market right now. It's not because they are 60%, it's just that the others kept falling down. So anyway, so Rahul launched two companies. One was this uh, drones which will, you know, fly people from Nariman Point to airport or from Gurgaon to the Cannot Place. And the other company that he launched was with me, which I co-founded, where AI on OS, IONOS. I thought, I'm going to make bigger news. Trust me, even my son, even my daughter-in-law wanted more about how the drones will fly and when will they fly? Are they are a substitute for flying cars? Is that what AI is going to do? Or I answered more questions about that flying car that vertical takeoff drone than I did about AI. So I hope you guys have more questions because I'm really starved. Uh, but the main point that I want to make here is that future is really going to be exponential. And we have seen a lot happening. We have seen our wearable devices and our phone. If you ever think why Apple is the last, you know, the richest company in the world, it's not about just the phone. Trust me, Android phones today, feature by feature, are far superior than any iOS phone. But Apple is bigger or most valuable because of the data, because of the way they integrate the data, because somebody would call them more as a health devices company than just a phone company. They are the ones who know how much you sleep, when do you wake up, when do you run, when do you go to office, just think about it. They have more control over data. Now flip this, what is India's advantage? India's advantage is not X number of youth or Y number of you know, political parties. India's advantage is 1.4 billion people generating data that can be used to create solutions and AI will help us leapfrog. So when a Ray Kurzweil says longevity, if, you, if somebody is going to be 30 in the next, by 2030, that means if the person was born in 2000, the chances are that person will live to 125. Now I don't know what that person will do, but that's a different story. Uh, because if everything AI is going to do, then why the hell do I want to live till 125? But that's a different discussion. Uh, so all I'm trying to make a point out here is, if you look at every futurist, we all know that the mainframe that the first mainframe that India imported versus 
the phones that you carry versus the phones that will not be carried by you but would be some tattooed somewhere on you because there will not be a phone a few years from now. There will be a few tattoos and that's it. That is your imprints. That's your semiconductors. Now, don't ask me what the semiconductor industry is going to do. I mean, we have a lot coming. So anyway, my point again is, guys, we haven't seen the growth of AI as yet. And I hope as we continue to develop the models, they are not going to be as power hungry as they wants us to be. Because I do believe the better language models, the better fine tuning of the, the way data will integrate, I think we would, should be requiring a much less power. It is just the beginning, it's just the initial wave. And uh, just to illustrate that example, many of you remember when Sam Altman was in India, he had kind of thrown what I would say that India would never be able to develop an LLM. And uh, Rajan Anandan, who used to be with Google, who used to be with Sequoia, he asked Sam Altman, the founder of 150 billion market cap company called OpenAI, a question, and Sam was a little bit dismissive. Since that came on the Twitter, I just said, I accept the challenge. Sam Altman again clarified that I just meant is that you cannot do it in you know, less than 100 million. You can't develop an LLM. I just kept quiet. And I want to give credit to the team at Tech Mahindra. They developed an LLM in less than a million dollars. And they are there. <laughs> the point here is a little different. The point here is data is your strength. Number two is look for that challenge. If Kurzweil could say his parents and his grandparents died before the age of 40 and today is living up to 76 because he took longevity as a challenge. I think it's an India's opportunity. We need to take the challenge. Maybe we want to do it in one-tenth of the power that Divya wants us to consume. Maybe we, want, uh, we want, don't want to be dependent on Salesforce as an enterprise AI. Maybe we want to look at, you know, the new frontiers, education, healthcare. Look at, look at that healthcare. How much data do we have? I mean, should we not be doing, ultimately, what is the last final goal for all of us in AI? We should be able to do personalized. Personalized retail, personalized healthcare, personalized education, predictive, and more important is also productive. If we want to do all of this, why can't we accept the challenges? Why can't we create what I would call each one of you, whichever industry you want to focus in, this is our opportunity. And honestly, I do believe that one of those famous movie dialogues, Apna Time Aiga, I'm saying Apna Time Aagya Hai, AI will make it happen. Let's take the challenge and let's make it happen. So thank you guys. Thank you so much.